Today in Sunday School, we are celebrating Palm Sunday. And this is the Sunday before Easter when Jesus and his friends entered Jerusalem and they had a huge parade for him. It wasn't an organized parade like we think of with floats and all of that. So it was more spontaneous. But we're gonna think about what it would be like to have a parade for Jesus and why they had a parade for Jesus. Have you ever been in a parade? Have you ever watched a parade? Think about what it felt like to either be in the parade or to get ready for the parade or to watch the parade. It's very exciting, isn't it? Parades are a fun way to celebrate something, but they also tend to attract people. So even if you weren't planning to go to a parade and you saw one, you might think, oh, I should find out what's going on. I wanna see what's happening. And you would rush over to see the parade because it's so exciting, right? As we think about parades, I brought a magnet. Can you see it here? It's really big. And some paper clips. And the thing about parades is that they attract people just like this magnet is going to attract paper clips. And they sort of draw people to them. See how now the paper clips are kind of pulling on each other as much as in creating a parade of paper clips. Look at that. Now I can get more paper clips on the magnet itself, but I almost don't need to because the paper clips are getting magnetized. And then just like a parade, people see all the people together and they want to come too. That's like what happened when Jesus came into Jerusalem. People saw that he was that people were excited, and then they got excited too. As I said before, today's story about Palm Sunday has a parade in it. And it was a spontaneous parade. No one had really planned it, but when Jesus entered Jerusalem, people got really excited and a parade formed around them, cheering and welcoming Jesus into the city. It's one of the few stories in the Bible that appears in all four of the, the gospel stories. In the four gospel books that we learned about in the Bible, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And all four of them tell us the story of Palm Sunday and Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Today we're reading our scripture story from the Spark Story Bible. I'm going to open it up here. We're reading the story of Palm Sunday. Friends, Jesus said to his disciple, I need to go to Jerusalem. I've got some important things to do, and I want to celebrate Passover with you there. Will you come with me? Sure, said the disciples. Passover is a great holiday, such good food, and what a wonderful story Passover celebrates, the exodus of God's people, the Israelites from Egypt. It's, a good, it's good to be with friends and family at Passover. So Jesus and his friends started to go to Jerusalem. When they got close to the city, Jesus said, I'd like two of you to go borrow a donkey in the next village over. Please tell the owner I need it. He'll understand. When the two friends came back with a donkey, Jesus climbed on its back and rode down the hill into the city of Jerusalem. The disciples followed behind him. Suddenly, they found themselves in a parade. People were singing and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, here comes God's king. Hosanna, praise God. People all over heard the shouting and singing, and they joined the parade too. Hundreds of people, thousands of people. They started taking off their coats and laying them on the ground for Jesus and the donkey to walk on. They pulled palm branches down from the trees and waved them as they sang. Then they threw their palms on the ground to make a path for Jesus. The crowds gave Jesus a royal welcome as he rode into the city, just like a king. But Jesus was a very different king. He was a king of peace. Not everyone understood that. Jesus was not at all what they were expecting. They thought the crowd was too loud and the parade was getting too big. Who is that man? Someone asked. What's going on here? Asked another. The crowd answered, this is Jesus, God's king. He has come to save us. Some of the religious leaders murmured, hush, Jesus, tell your friends to be quiet. It's way too loud here. But Jesus said, we can try to make these people be quiet, but that wouldn't make a difference because today the whole earth is celebrating. There's a few things I want to call your attention to in this story. As Jesus and his friends get ready to enter Jerusalem, 
Jesus asks his friends to go borrow a donkey for him to ride into Jerusalem on. Now, this might seem like not a big deal to us. Donkey, eh, okay, so he was tired of walking. But this has important significance for the time that it was written. In those days, a king, if he was going into battle, would have, been, would have ridden on a horse. If a king was coming into a town peacefully, not for war, but for peace, then he would have ridden on a donkey. So the fact that Jesus asks his friends to borrow a donkey and not a horse to ride into Jerusalem is important. It sets the stage for Jesus being a different kind of king, for being a king who is bringing peace. Now, people were hoping that Jesus would be a king who would go into battle for them and save them, just like it says in the story. And he will, but he's going to do it in a peaceful way. And the donkey tells us that. The other fun thing about this story is that the people just made a parade. They didn't have floats and signs that they had made at home and brought with them. Instead, they looked for the things around them that they could make a parade with, make a lot of noise with, and lay down in front of Jesus, kind of like a red carpet, so that he, didn't, he and his donkey didn't have to ride on the dirt. We're going to play a game that does just this. The first game is called Cloak Walk. Now in Bible times, a cloak or a shirt was a very valued possession. People wore them to keep themselves warm and when they slept outside, they used their cloaks as blankets. Sometimes they would use their cloak as a payment for a debt. We think of cloak as just being something that we wear. But on Palm Sunday, when people were creating a parade for Jesus, they took off their cloaks and laid the cloaks on the ground. And this was such an honor. Not only were they covering the dirty ground so Jesus didn't have Jesus and his donkey didn't have to walk in the dust, but they were also laying down before him something that was very valuable. To play this game, choose one side of your room to be Jerusalem and the other side to be a starting point, okay? You can lay out some shirts, just a couple will probably do, maybe three or four would at the most, depending on how big your space is. Choose someone to be Jesus. And the other people are gonna be the people who are honoring Jesus with the parade. Now, Jesus can only walk to the gate by walking across the cloaks. So the other people have to take turns moving the cloaks. For example, if I was Jesus and I was walking up onto this first cloak and then I keep walking, what's gonna happen when I get up here? There's no cloak for me. So the people in my family who are being the ones following the parade, they're gonna to have to pick up a cloak and put it in front of me so that before I step down, there's somewhere for me to step. Got it? Have fun. The second game is a relay game and you and your family will need two dolls or stuffed animals. You're trying to help the doll or the stuffed animal see Jesus in the parade. So starting at the starting line that you set with your family, each, per, each team will take a doll or a stuffed animal and put it on their shoulder run across so that they can see the whole parade and then run back, give the doll to the next person on your team and they can run so that the baby can see the parade and run back. The whole time you should be shouting and cheering like the, the people were for Jesus. Do you remember what they were saying? They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now you can shorten that and just say Hosanna but I want you to run back and forth and make sure that your baby or your um, stuffed animal can see the whole parade and be as excited as you are about it. Now that we've played with the story a little bit and thought about what it would be like to be so excited to be welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem, we need to look at the end of the story. Towards the end, Jesus' friends start to get a little nervous that people are being too excited and too loud and they, they warn Jesus that he should quiet the crowd so that they he don't call too much attention to him. And Jesus says, at least one of the gospels, he says, well, I tell you, I could ask them to be quiet, but even if they were silent, the stones themselves would shout out. I want you to think about even if the people were silent, Jesus is saying that the earth would be excited. The earth would shout for his presence. Can you imagine the rocks, which are usually silent, all of a sudden shouting out Hosanna? 
So what I would like you to do today as a little project is to create a rock that welcomes Jesus, that shouts out with excitement that Jesus is here. Go out into your backyard or your front yard and find a rock that you can paint bright colors and show some excitement for Jesus being here. So I've found a couple of rocks that I am going to paint with in bright colors to shout out for Jesus. On this one, I'm going to use my squeezy bottle to write Hosanna. But you could really write whatever you want on your, and use whatever materials you have. You might have um, squeezy bottles of paint. Oh, I'm gonna run off the end here. But you might only have paint and brushes. Look, it goes all the way off the end. There it says Hosanna off the end because I didn't plan it very well. That's gonna take a while to dry. But think about what would show excitement and find something in, in your backyard and at your house that you could use to show excitement for Jesus. I'm gonna use some paint over here and a brush, make some pretty designs, all sorts of stuff. I want this rock to really show up when I put it out in the yard after it's dry, I want it to be exciting for people who see it, that they know something special is happening here. All right, so see what you can find. Send me some pictures of your rocks and how you decide to paint them. All the different colors that make your rock exciting, make it shout out for Jesus. I have one more activity for you, friends. I want you to think about how you can share the excitement of Jesus with someone else. And part of that is just sending some love to the people that you know. I'm including in your lesson a card like this. You could make your own card that just says, Rejoicing in Jesus! Hosanna! Something exciting about the story that we've heard today and how you can share that with someone else. Or you and your family can fill out this piece of paper for someone else. And it has a place for you to draw a picture of, of your family and the people that you're sending it to. And then tell them some things that you are thankful for about them or some memories you share or something that makes them special to you. And share those things. Just like a parade where people were so excited to shout out about Jesus, let's spend a little time shouting out about our friends and family that we don't get to see so much right now, but we don't want them to forget how much we love them. All right, friends, we've had a good time today thinking about the parade for Jesus. And I hope that you had a chance to also have a little parade of your own with the palm leaves that you picked up from church yesterday in preparation for today's festivities. Take a walk around your neighborhood with your family and wave that palm branch around. Let people know that you're excited that Jesus is here and that he's a part of your life and that even if you were quiet about it, you know that the rocks around you would be exciting and cheering for him. You can set your rocks out in the, in the front yard or in the backyard to remind you about just how exciting it is to have Jesus in our lives. Next week, we're going to have Holy Week. And there's a lot of sad and confusion and worry that happens in, in the coming days as we hear the story of Jesus. But at the end of the week, we know that there is happiness again. So I want you to experience all the emotions and all the prayer that goes into Holy Week. And I'll see you next Sunday for the celebration of all of the ways we learn that Jesus can be with us forever and that God wins. Love wins every time. Don't forget that. Today, be happy, be celebrating that, the, that Jesus has entered into Jerusalem and entered into your life and share that with your family and friends. I'll see you next week. Bye, friends. I love you very much.